Hello everyone, Seth here from Cubicle Productions, and I have returned for episode 11, I'm past all 10 fingers now, of Cube Talk. You know what else? The vlogging shirt is back, baby. Yeah, that's right. For the fourth time in a row. Look, I'm wearing the same t-shirt again because consistency is key. And I also felt that at this point I might as well continue the trend. But no matter, no matter, I've got things to talk about. Now quick, to the update. I am finally back from spring break, which is interesting because this week almost every other college is on spring break. So my school has a very peculiar schedule. It wasn't all relaxation. There were definitely a few things I needed to take care of at home, but it was also a nice opportunity to recharge. And of course, now there is the final stretch of the school year. I'm pretty excited that my first year of college is finally drawing to a close. Of course, now is the time of year when professors start talking about the dreaded phrase, the final exam. But that's all right, everything looks fine for me, and I haven't had too much trouble. I'm also starting to once again get together with the crew so I can start working on some more short films, both for my channel and for just other people. Now, I've been talking a lot about the newest 4K consumer cameras that have been announced in the recent months. But because of the first half of the year also plays host to most of the tech conferences, I'm not quite done. I'm still gonna update you guys on all these cameras because I find this stuff really, really interesting. So without further ado, let's get to some of that camera news. Reviews are finally starting to trickle in with the Sony a6300 that I announced earlier in episode five. And what's the verdict? It is an awesome camera. The imaging is pretty phenomenal at 4K and the low light abilities were as expected. That is to say really good, but still not quite as good as the a7S II. But that's what you get for dumping an extra two grand into a camera body. There are no overheating issues. The focus system seems pretty solid in most cases and the camera's just overall really nice. In all, everyone likes this camera. And with a price point around $1,000 for the body, it is a great deal for a great camera if you can't shovel out the dough for an a7S II. I'm obviously not going to bother doing a full review of the a6300 because I obviously don't have it. Meanwhile, the Nikon D500 and D5 are finally shipping out to the people who pre-ordered just after the announcement at CES this past January. I'm eagerly awaiting reviews of these cameras and I know there aren't any right now because when I look on YouTube or online, all I see are glorified specifications sheets with like images and text with the camera specs and cheesy elevator music. People, these are not reviews. Look, a review is when you actually have the camera in your hands and you're using it and then you give your opinion on the camera's performance and everything like that. Listing out the specs is not a review. That's clickbait. It's an overview. Anyway. Speaking of reviews, I still have not seen any about the Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera. And considering that it was announced last year at NAB in April, which is almost an entire year ago, and was supposed to ship this past fall, it's incredibly disappointing. The Ursa Mini, at least, which is from the same company, has already shipped and I have plenty of reviews trickling in for that. So that'll give me something to work with in the meantime. And you know, I'm talking reviews, 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 but I really like watching these camera reviews because I can get a great feel for how the camera should work in my use case. Especially if I find those Philip Bloom style reviews that are incredibly long, but really in depth. It's also cool to see a camera in action and imagine how I would be able to work with the pros and cons of that camera. There's a little bit of dreaming too. I'd love to get my hands on some of this stuff to try it out. The biggest reason I watch these reviews, however, is that I learn from them. I've discovered a ton about how cameras work from watching camera reviews and paying attention to terms and mechanics. Philip Bloom, the guy I mentioned earlier, is a professional filmmaker who's famous for his very lengthy camera reviews, particularly a three-part review on the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema camera that totaled about an hour in length. He split it up into like three 20-minute segments, which I think was very nice of him. While the review was indeed long-winded, by the time I finished it, I knew almost everything about the camera, including performance, ergonomics, and workflow integration. And that, in my opinion, is what a review is really about. How does the camera work? How does it fit into certain use case scenarios? A good reviewer should be able to cover all of these things. Anyway, that's all there is from my end. And now that the update from my end is finished, I think it's time we had a discussion. So let's talk. 
I've done a lot of speaking about cameras from Sony, Nikon, and even Blackmagic Design in this episode, but you may have noticed that there is one mainstream brand I haven't mentioned. I still haven't heard a peep on the interwebs about Canon. The 1DX Mark II, Canon's new 4K DSLR, is nowhere to be found, neither in reviews nor in the news. This really surprises me because Canon is the professional and consumer camera brand. They were in the game earlier than anyone else, and they put a lot of work into their C line of cameras, which is their cinema line, like the C100 and all of that. But after all of that is said and done, they haven't really gone anywhere in a while. Even in photography, there hasn't been anything exciting from them in years. And meanwhile, the likes of Sony and Blackmagic Design and Nikon, yes, Nikon, are starting to catch up and even surpass Canon in some ways. This brings up some questions. Where is Canon? Are they doing anything about this? Is Canon falling behind in the video industry and just even in general? Well, not exactly. They're already well in the video industry and Canon is pretty much done developing its cinema line. They already have a consumer base from when they first got into the business years ago, and so they don't really need to prove themselves. Thus, they seem to have developed a sort of complacency when it comes to putting out cameras. Also consider the fact that Canon is pretty much the professional lens manufacturer, and it's not hard to imagine why the people at Canon are comfortable staying exactly where they are. Why fix it if it isn't broken? They got into the business first, so it doesn't matter if their cameras aren't the best, their consumers simply trust the brand. This is where I think Canon is starting to lose it a little bit. Nothing of theirs is broken. It doesn't need fixing. But what I'm seeing is that Canon is simply falling behind. Getting lost in the dust. They don't need fixing, but they do need upgrading. Almost every professional photographer I know now uses Nikon. And more and more filmmakers are switching from Canon every day. Heck, my Nikon has better low light capabilities than a Canon DSLR that costs almost twice as much. And the equivalent model that I was considering getting from Canon when I got my Nikon didn't have 60 frames a second at 1080p like this camera does. And I think that's because companies like Sony and Blackmagic Design are, are actually bringing new ideas and technology to the table. I mean, I've heard from several sources that Canon has been using the same sensor technology in most of their cameras for many years now. And in a rapidly evolving industry like consumer video and consumer photography, that won't fly. People like innovation, especially when it opens up new avenues of creativity. And right now, you know who's bringing the innovation? Not Canon, that's for sure. Now look, I'm not talking from a professional standpoint. There are plenty of professionals who simply don't care enough to deviate from a brand like Canon. An adequate camera is all they need. The image in the end is what matters, and that's for everyone, but some people just like the technical things better. And from a technical standpoint, Canon is losing big time. So if Canon wants to really pick up again, they need to start bringing their A game to the table and pushing out some really new stuff. And a single high-end 4K DSLR most people can't afford is not what we need from a camera company that caters to professionals and consumers. That's just my take on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this Cube Talk and you want to see more, drop a like on the video and subscribe to see more like this and film and gaming in the future. Make sure to check out my website online at cubicalproductions.com. It's www.cubicalproductions.com. And stay tuned for many more videos. And as always, I'm Seth from Cubicle Productions and I'll see you guys later. Cube out.